for hanging out What's with. What's up, dude? <laughs> it's Keith Galpas, man. This is awesome. Um, hey, one of the most requested topics I get, Keith, is landscaping and pruning. These guys want to yeah. see more about that. You guys know I'm a mow and go guy, right? I don't do a lot of pruning, a lot of planting, a lot of landscaping, but this guy, this guy has a really successful business. So what are we doing today? We're going to do a property walk of a landscape install. It's an R&R, &R, a rip out and redo and break it all down. If you haven't done bigger landscaping jobs before, and uh, let's learn from some of my painful lessons. <laughs> like this is a way bigger price point than anything I've ever looked at, I've ever done. But this is like in your wheelhouse. So what do we got? Yeah, so I mean, you start out small and then you work your way up. You kind of feel the sting. Uh, so this whole whole thing is a job you do. We'll check out the front as well, but. Yeah, R&R, &R, it's a complete rip out and reinstall. And this is actually an upsell. So this customer called us a few months back and we came in to do property maintenance because I'm talking the, the trees and shrubs were so overgrown around the whole foundation, the garden beds of the house, okay. that you literally, they were up to the gutters. Wow. So we came in and we trimmed everything down and uh, we had a chipper out here and we cleaned up the property. <sighs> and then, you know, breath of fresh air. And I told the customer, I said, listen, uh, I would recommend ripping out and removing and reinstalling some of this landscaping. And the customer kind of just wanted to do a couple sections. And I said, you know, if you have some, some overgrown stuff on one side, but you just replace a few things on this side, mm -hmm. then you're going to have this huge juxtaposition. And it's not going to be right. So, so you did a whole overhaul basically. Yeah. It's best to do the whole front or the front and the side or just the whole thing. Don't just do a little bit here and there, but we're going to walk around. We're going to break this down and I'll show you a way to simplify it. So this one is, we're at 13,100 so far. And there's, there's upsells in here as well. So you always prepare, if you're doing a landscape job like this, a multi-day job for change orders. Once a customer gets going and they start seeing the progress and they're happy, they're always usually going to want to add on. Okay. So you anticipate that and then you send them the change order and you keep adjusting it as you go. So like I said here, the trees were completely overgrown. The shrubs are overgrown. We came, we removed all this out and that's where we're gonna talk about phases. Okay. Now you don't need a fancy landscape design program unless you're really getting into hardscape and you know, I'd say 20,000 plus, okay. which you can, but you don't have to. You can literally do it all on a piece of paper. You can draw it out, you can take pictures, you can just make checklists. You can point to the neighbor's landscaping if you look around. Yep. When you're walking with your client, say, how about that? Do you like that? What about that? Yep. You know, beautiful you subdivision here. You can send the customer pictures of your previous work. You can go on Google. But if you start out smaller, four, five, six grand, then work your way up. I'm still working my way up. Mm -hmm. But you learn very quickly. There was this point where I said, oh, this big job, it's not even that big of a job, but it's really just a bunch of small jobs grouped together into one big job. Mm. So let's put that into quadrants. If you put it on a framework, days. So, or phases. So, but even before that is when you do the initial consultation with the client, find out what they want. And the more clear of an understanding you can get what of they, that you can get of what they want and they feel understood, mm -hmm. then that allows you to just have creative authority to make it happen. Cool. So, and you didn't get started with $13,000 job. You were saying earlier, you start with $1,500 job, then four grand job, then a nine grand job. Uh, some of those, but the first year in business, I did a, a twenty thousand dollar job. Wow! And even though I knew how to do it all, because I was up all night panicking, reading books, researching <laughs> on Google, watching YouTube videos, what to do, yep. calling up friends, make sure you have friends in the business that you can call up and ask them what to do and what not to do. That's huge. But you know, I barely made any profit off the first job. It was just enough money to buy an engagement ring for my wife. Oh! Coming home to a one bedroom apartment with a vi an eviction notice. I'm still mad about that job. <laughs> So, uh, this right here was all be ripped out. It was mm. grown up to the gutters. Sure. We're reinstalling burning bush and pampas grass and ivory halo dogwood shrubs. And I'm trying to give you as much as I can to compress here, so stick with me. But when you do landscaping, less is more. Proper plant spacing is right. 
mm -hmm. explain that to the customer. Whatever you plant is going to fill in. If the customer has irrigation, that's very important with what you install to make sure that you give them watering instructions. If they don't have irrigation, you still give them watering instructions, but make sure you plant stuff that doesn't require a lot of water. Here, yep. we get 33 inches of water annually, right? It rains quite a bit in this area. But if, what, what about like digging? We miss dig. I know you're talking about that oh, um, yeah, yeah. before we hit record. Like you guys, water lines, you do that. gas lines, sprinkler lines. Yep. Depending on how deep you're digging, I mean, you could just be digging out an edge for a garden bed, metal edging, and you can hit an internet line. It mm. happens, but you should always call before you dig. We call Miss Dig, and they stake out the property mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not going to hit any gas lines or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, that would be a huge problem. But back to what I was saying about phases and days, having checklists is very important. And you learn how to do this by going out and doing it, undercharging, having anxiety attacks, <laughs> staying up all night, because the unforeseen things that are just part of the process, if you expect everything to go perfect, that's where you go wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you've been through all these processes so many times, you know that things take longer than you would expect in a perfect world, right? Sure. How do you go about it? Like, is one day like a tear out day? Yeah. One day is like a I, I don't know, like a pr like a planting day. One day is like a mulch day. How do you how do you attack all your jobs? Yeah, so a a six day job would be day one mm -hmm. is the the rip out. Okay. We come, we remove all the shrubs. We start from the top down. So we trim all the trees or remove everything. Okay. And then day two. We go down to the garden beds, we start ripping the plants out of the garden beds, removing the old mulch, digging down and resetting the grade. Okay. Day three is coming in and installing all of the black metal edging right here. Yeah, I like this. this is that aluminum uh, edging? Yeah. So there's three different, four different types of edging. Well, there's actually five. One is you could do brick edging, you could do stamped concrete edging, you could do a natural edge. You can do black diamond plastic edging, aluminum edging, or metal black, black aluminum edging. Yeah. Which we offer all those options to the customers. This is the easiest stuff for guys like me to trim against, for the mo guys. Yes. <laughs> so I love it. That or the brick, you know? No stone. Don't do the stone, the boulders. Oh, because the grass feathers in between the cracks. Anyway. Yeah, the, the field stone. Yeah, yeah. We're actually doing field stone borders around all these trees. Oh, really? <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> well, I don't cut this property. <laughs> so one day is a tear out. One day, uh, how you try to do is one day is a tear out, one day is a pruning day, one day is a, a final like tidy out. So day out. one is rip everything out. Mm -hmm. Day two is, uh, d depending on how much manpower you have, you can rip everything out and grade everything and get everything down to level the first day. Sure. Day two, you can come in and put all the edging in and literally install all the plants. Okay. Day three, you can put down all the weed barrier fabric and install all the pins and install all the decorative stone. Okay. However much manpower you have, you have to gauge out how long it's gonna take you. Okay. Doing a makeover on a customer's property and they come out and they get excited, usually they start asking questions and yep. they want to have more done. So you anticipate change orders and plan that into your schedule. If you only got five days to do something and you think you're just gonna squeeze that in, mm. well, maybe you should, I always do buffer days for rain and then an entire extra day on top of any big project uh, or any project over $7,500 for that matter, I book out an extra day just for cleanup. Okay. So I tell the customer, day one, we remove everything. Day two, we grade all the garden beds. Day three, we put all the edging in. Day four, we put all the weed barrier fabric and pins. Day five, we install all the brand new decorative stone. Day six is final touch-ups and cleanup. Wow. So, in this this thirteen grand job, you can do what in seven, six, seven, eight working days, business I mean, days. We could do it all in a week, five days. Wow. Now, if you have a job over ten grand, I suggest this is the most important tip. Book one whole day just for getting all the materials on the job site, mm. because you might not think about when you're quoting a job how long it takes and charging. Okay. You might not think about how long it takes and charging for the time, 
to go out and source and retrieve all of these materials from different landscape suppliers, from different nurseries. I've heard you say that on Instagram, like, you know, just driving around to all these different places can take four yeah. or five hours. Just going to the dump sometimes takes, literally I've spent two and a half hours yep. just driving to the dump, waiting in line, dumping, and then coming back. So these are all like hidden costs of a landscape job. Uh, they appear to be hidden in the yeah. beginning, but once you get going, they just become yeah. Rel that's why relative. I, I don't want to see you guys like losing their butt when they're going to the, the <laughs> nursery or the dump or the landscape supply place to go get mulch. Like, oh, you know, three, four, five hours of drive time, three, four hours of this, that adds up. And you got to factor that pricing into the job. Is yeah. What, what you're trying to say. Another important thing is the 50% gross profit margin or you can't do the job mm -hmm. rule. So that's what I like doing checklists. So I'll tell the customer, okay, we have a... Like this is a $1,500 plant materials budget, Okay. right? I know that this black metal edging is um, $36 per piece. Okay. I go to this local landscape supply I don't normally go to, it's $39 per piece. That's already eating into my profits, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I already told the customer how much it's gonna cost. Decorative stone, there's 16 different types of decorative stone that we offer the clients by sending them pictures. I have videos that I've created of showing them out of the clients. They pick the one they want. If they can't decide, we bring them some samples. Okay. And then they approve it. Today, we just want to get everything removed and cleaned up and get all the bulk off the property. Sure. These That's checkpoints. All. So day one, if you hit that by three o'clock, well, you have a couple more hours, be aware if you, you get into something else and you start something else, mm. you're opening up a whole nother can of worms. Sure, you can get a jump on it, but if you're trying to do multiple parts of the project at once, yeah. you're ADD jumping around, trying to install stuff while one guy's ripping stuff out, another guy's cleaning the gutters, Oh yeah, that's insanity. It's best to have, unless you've got your flow down to the point, where a couple guys can break off and start the next thing, yeah. where this is being cleaned and they're coming right behind installing. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to get to that point. I'm not, I'm not at that point yet, but. You keep your whole crew on one site and start to finish. You don't send guys off. On to one phase. What? Okay. And one job. Okay. Get everything done. And then once that's 100% done, then we start the next thing, installing all the edging. Okay. All right. Then the next thing is uh, plants. Go to the nursery and get a whole load of plants. Make sure you have a plant materials list. Mm -hmm. Double check it. Oops. Run around. <laughs> check it at the nursery yep. when you're loading it up. Double check because yesterday we had to go back to the nursery because I drove off and forgot five U shrubs and a rose of Sharon. Yep, and that because cost time and money. Yeah, I had to go back and it, <clears throat> luckily it's right down the street, but it, it took an extra 40 minutes off the day wow. because I didn't look at my checklist because the guy at the nursery is like, yep, that's all it. And right. would you just trusted it and you just took off. So enough of those things happen on one job. That'll cost you a whole day, which literally just costs you another thousand dollars in profit out of your pocket. So the goal for today is to get all the plants planted. Yep. We've got Michigan peat. It's mm -hmm. basically composted leaves. It's very nutritious. We plant, we dig out bigger than the hole, deeper than the hole. Then we amend the soil with the existing soil mixed with peat moss and make sure we plant it. But depending on the plant, this, these are gonna be two inches above grade and okay. mounded because once that's all done to, and everything's graded, tomorrow we're coming and installing all the weed barrier fabric yep. and pins. Weed barrier fabric's an entire video in and of itself, but make sure you always get 30% more weed barrier fabric than you think you need mm -hmm. because when you're cutting it all and cutting it with razors there's going to be a bunch of waste okay and make sure you charge for that and then we put an average of one pin per every square foot so you think ah, i need a couple hundred pins you know these are the sod staple pins that okay. cost up to 25 cents a piece mm. we buy a whole box of 1000 of them for 80 dollars because i anticipate on putting 500 square feet of guard bed space 500 pins wow so you can go back to the guard you could be going running back to the landscape supply spending another 45 minutes 45 minutes and another 60 dollars on pins like oh shoot wow so little so, things like that that eat you up along the way this is huge bro i mean this is already i, I mean it might sound rudimentary to you you're like i hope i'm giving the good stuff this is huge for me this is already yeah. good stuff so you you uh schedule phases uh you take time to know your numbers like really break things down and then another quick little tip was always give yourself more time, more more margin, right? It's gonna take longer than you think and probably more money than you think. So just charge appropriately. 
Um, and then pricing. Uh, what, what's like, what's your oh, yeah. rule of thumb? Uh, like two and a half or what? Yeah, that, that was it. It's the 50% gross profit margin rule. Okay. So after you have everything and you've sourced all the materials and pricings, like you you know, you mm -hmm. can call around the landscapes, but you're going to have to sit down for a couple hours and crunch the math base. And, and you want to get the quote over as soon as possible, 12 hours. If it's a job that's, uh, you know, 10, 20 grand, it yep. might take you, it might take you a week to get the quote over depending on what you're doing. Sure. But you do all the math of what's going to cost you, your time, materials, uh, I'm sorry, your, your materials, your labor, everything. Go overhead, yep. Your dumping fees, the fuel, and once you get all the costs associated, the cost of goods sold, yep. then you want to times that by two. So you're like, oh my God, it's, gonna, it's going to cost me six grand, seven six grand. grand to do this job. I have to charge $12,000, so there's a 50% gross profit margin, or I cannot take on this job. Is that what you try to aim for? Always, 100%. Never. Wow. So this one is a it's a 60% gross profit margin. Dang. And I've already I already know I'm going to eat up that other 10% to land on 50. Yep. Yep. And then after taxes and uh, the personal payroll and all that stuff, I probably make 30, 20, 30%. Uh, the business is the profit margin is 25.1%. Okay. So here's what you do: you create these laws for yourself, and this has helped me tremendously. Yeah where you say, okay, I'm gonna take on this job. This is what's gonna cost. This is what I, you put yourself in front of all this stuff and you put yourself in front. It's like kind of like the profit first method almost yep. for landscapers and say, this is what I wanna make off this job. So I'm happy and I'm not rushed around in anxiety and I can actually take the time. To do a good job, bro. Yeah, to do, good to do a good job, to make sure every T is crossed and every die is odded, <laughs> every, <laughs> I is dotted and every T is crossed. <clears throat> Tell the customer that too, but here's another tr uh, thing, phrase. I've done this a thousand times. Yep. I'm the guy for the job. I'm very passionate. I mean, we deliver. Yeah. You do immaculate but, work, bro. Like, it's well, funny. this ain't even done, but yeah. Well, hey, one thing I wanted to, uh, this is something I thought that I was thinking when we were recording uh, back up yeah. front, was you're like, dude, it's 13,000 or what? Well, this is 13,000. I'm trying, yeah. 13,000 bucks. Well, okay, so one thing that I know I struggle with a lot was knowing my worth, knowing my value. But here's the thing I'm trying to say is, I don't know if I was a homeowner, if I would spend $13,000. Like, like what I'm trying to say is like, don't be intimidated to quote 10, 12, 13, $20,000 jobs. Don't like put the value of a dollar bill on the job for what you would pay. It's what the customer would pay. And so like to you, you're like, dude, this job's only five, six, seven grand cost. And sometimes we have this complex about selling it for 13 grand, 15 grand. We get nervous if the customer is gonna buy it. We get nervous if we're overcharging. We we think 13 grand, like we grew up pretty economically on the bottom of that totem pole, right? But somebody that lives in a nicer subdivision or has a beautiful house, 15, 18, 20 grand might be like, oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Like, like how do you guys do this? Deposits, thirds, thirds, thirds? You know, or, or always get the deposit. You can call it a good faith materials deposit. Yeah. It depending on what your yeah your materials and pricing is. Here's the way I do it. Very important. Say thirty percent down, or thirty three percent down, or even fifty percent down. Okay. I tell the customer uh, we require any jobs over one thousand dollars require a thirty percent deposit on the morning of the job site. Okay. So once we show up on time. We start working, and depending on how you word it with the customer, I say you see us working, you get that warm, fuzzy feeling like, wow, these guys are legit. Yep. And you feel good, then come out and write us a check. I'll get a signature from you, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to your invoice, and I'll send it over to your email, okay. and then I deposit that immediately. So you do a third to hold the spot, a third the day of, and then a third when you're finished? No, no, no. Okay. So if we're really busy and booked out, yep. like we, we're booked out in nine weeks, it's a $100 deposit oh, okay. just to book a spot on the calendar to make sure the customer's serious, because they'll try to use you yep. so they can go find someone else, and I don't play that. Yep. But um, That's honest, yeah. So I, I know like Caleb Baldwin, he does like yeah. fourths, like draws, like when you book, when the materials are delivered, a certain checkpoint, and then a finish. Um, one thing that, um, so that would make sense if, if you're doing big $50, jobs, $50,000 jobs, yeah, 40, 50 grand, yeah. per, beautiful. So to wrap all this up, if you tell yourself, this is easy, man, I got this, then you got it, right? And all a bigger job is, is really just 
several smaller jobs grouped together mm. into one bigger job. I like That's that. all it really is, and you can do it. It's simple. Okay. Cool but deal. there's a lot more to talk about. We'll do that in another video. Honestly, bro, I feel like this is the most honest landscape walk around <laughs> I've ever seen because, like, some like sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you learn. We always say. Um, but again, I always admire the landscaping work, and uh, we need to do more videos like this. I'm help down. You, help you guys out. So if you want to see some more, leave us some comments down below. So we'll leave a card here or over here. I don't even know how that works with uh, that other job that you did two years ago. That walk around. Yeah. That was pricing, how to plant, how to uh, install. Really, really helpful content. So. You good? And, yep. And, and hit me up. I'm Keith Kelfis on YouTube. I got a ton of videos about landscaping and all the head trash that you go through because I go through it myself. This guy's a gem. And uh, also on Instagram. Instagram. Oh, yeah, Instagram. At Keith Kelfis.